From the invention of computer programming languages up to the mid-1970s, most computer programmers created, edited and stored their programs line by line on punched cards. <laughs> punched cards A punched card is a flexible write-once medium that encodes data, most commonly 80 characters. Groups or decks of cards form programs and collections of data. Often programmers first wrote their program out on special forms called coding sheets, taking care to distinguish the digit 0 from the letter O, the digit 1 from the letter I, 8 from B, 2 from Z, and so on using local conventions such as the slashed zero. These forms were then taken by keypunch operators, who using a keypunch machine such as the IBM 029 punched the actual deck. Often another key punch operator would then take that deck and re-punch from the coding sheets, but using a verifier, such as the IBM 059 that simply checked that the original punching had no errors. A typing error generally necessitated repunching an entire card. The editing of programs was facilitated by reorganizing the cards, and removing or replacing the lines that had changed. Programs were backed up by duplicating the deck, or writing it to magnetic tape. In smaller organizations programmers might do all their own punching, and in all cases would often have access to a keypunch to make small changes to a deck. <laughs> Work environment A typical corporate or university computer installation would have a suite of rooms, with a large, access-restricted, air-conditioned room for the computer similar to today's server room and a smaller quieter adjacent room for submitting jobs. Nearby would be a room full of keypunch machines for programmer use. An IBM 407 accounting machine might be set up to allow newly created or edited programs to be listed printed out on fan fold paper for proofreading. An IBM 519 might be provided to reproduce program decks for backup or to punch sequential numbers in columns 73 to 80. In such mainframe installations, known as closed shops, programmers submitted the program decks, often followed by data cards to be read by the program, to a person working behind a counter in the computer room. During peak times, it was common to stand in line waiting to submit a deck. Many computer installations used cards with the opposite corner cut sometimes no corner cut as job separators, so that an operator could stack several job decks in the card reader at the same time and be able to quickly separate the decks manually when he removed them from the stacker. These cards e a JCL job card to start a new job were often prepunched in large quantities in advance. This was especially useful when the main computer did not read the cards directly, but instead read their images from magnetic tape that was prepared offline by smaller computers such as the IBM 1401. After reading the cards in, the computer operator would return the card deck, typically to one of a set of alphabetically labeled cubby holes, based on the programmer's last initial. Because programs were run in Batch processing, batch mode processing it might be a considerable time before the any hard copy printed or punched output was produced, and put into these same cubby holes, however, on a lightly used system, it was possible to make alterations and rerun a program in less than an hour. Dedicated programmers might stay up well past midnight to get a few quick turnarounds. Use of this expensive equipment was often charged to a user's account. A mainframe computer could cost millions of dollars and usage was measured in seconds per job. Smaller computers like the IBM 1000, 1620 and 1130, and minicomputers such as the PDP-11 were less expensive, and often run as an open shop, where programmers had exclusive use of the computer for a block of time. A keypunch was usually located nearby for quick corrections, although many of these smaller machines ran from punch tape. Topic. Identification and sequence Many early programming languages, including Fortran, COBOL and the various IBM assembler languages, used only the first 72 columns of a card. 
a tradition that traces back to the IBM 711 card reader used on the IBM 704 709, 7090 7094 series, especially the IBM 704, the first mass produced computer with floating point arithmetic hardware, which could only read 72 of the 80 columns in one pass. Columns 73 to 80 were ignored by the compilers and could be used for identification or a sequence number so that if the card deck was dropped it could be restored to its proper order using a card sorter. Depending on the programming language, debugging output statements could be quickly activated and commented out by using cards with such statements punched with the comment character e c in Fortran in column 80 of the card, turning the card end for end would put the c in the leading column, which transformed the now backwards card's contents into a comment while leaving the physical card in place in deck. An alternative, imperfect but commonly employed technique to maintain proper card order was to draw one or more diagonal stripes across the top edge of all the cards in a deck. In later years, as punch card data was converted to magnetic tape files the sequence numbers were often used as a column in an array as an index value that can be correlated to time sequences, such as in the natural sciences where the data on the cards were related to the periodic output of a measuring device such as water stage level recorders for rivers and streams in hydrology, or temperatures in meteorology. Entire vaults full of card decks could be reduced to much smaller racks of nine track tapes. See also Unit record equipment history <laughs>